What's up everyone, I'm the Drink Pro and today we're drinking Wild Turkey Master's Keat 17 Year Bottled and Bond. Hey everybody, Drink Pro Kyle here. Thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate everything you guys do to support the channel, watching the videos, clicking subscribe, sharing with your friends, joining me on the Patreon. All of those are great ways to help keep this channel going. It makes it so much easier for me to release this great content. I'm hoping by the time this video releases that I have passed 300 subscribers. So I'm super excited about that. It's a wonderful milestone. I've been steadily chugging and trying to get more and more people checking out these channels. So. Thank you all for being here. Today I'm trying a very recently released and very coveted pour. It's the Wild Turkey Master's Keep newest release, which is a 17 year bottled and bond version. Now I'm not certain if Master's Keep actually releases on an annual basis or a less or more frequent basis, but every so often there's a new release from Wild Turkey in their Master's Keep collection. And they're usually hard to get, very specific, interesting uh, takes on the Wild Turkey profile. And today, and the most recent release was a 17 year bottled and bond release. Now, I don't think I've ever done a video where I specifically explained what bottled and bond was. I think I may have discussed bottled and bond in passing, but I never gave you the specifics. So today I'm gonna to give you the specifics about bottled and bond, what it means, what it is, and then we're gonna dig into this wild turkey. Now, most recently you saw my video where I tasted with Nate uh, every wild turkey master's keep we could get our hands on and the wild turkey diamond edition. That was a wonderful tasting. Every one of those pours was fantastic. I couldn't believe it. So I have really high hopes uh, for this master's keep, maybe too high. My expectations might be a little bit above what this will be able to deliver, but we'll find out by tasting it together. So what does it mean for a whiskey to be bottled and bond? Well, there are specific regulations that you have to follow so that you may place the words bottled and bond on your label. Now, why is that important? Well, the bottled and bond act is actually quite old. It was passed in 1897. And it was actually passed in response to a lot of alteration of whiskey that was being done at the time. People really couldn't believe and trust what was actually going into their bottles. Colonel Edmund Hayes Taylor Jr., we know him, E.H. Taylor, actually worked with the Secretary of the Treasury, John Carlyle, to get the Bottled and Bond Passed Act. Now you might say, why is the Secretary of the Treasury involved? Well, it's because a lot of the benefit of Bottled and Bond whiskey is about excise tax. Under the Bottled and Bond scheme, when you tax a whiskey, you tax it after it's been finished, after it's being taken out of the barrels. And instead of taxing on a regular basis and having the taxes become higher and higher and higher, or instead of having to pay taxes on a whiskey years before you're able to actually sell it, the Bottled and Bond Act give this sort of tax reprieve, which is part of the reason why so many distilleries jumped at the opportunity to become Bottled and Bond producers when they were first introducing the act. That was the incentive was a tax benefit. Now, originally you only could get a Bottled and Bond whiskey between four and eight years old. But that actually changed, which is part of why the Wild Turkey Bottled and Bond at 17 years is sort of an unusual animal. It's a relatively new uh, creation. You couldn't have made a whiskey Bottled and Bond and 17 years until much later than the 1897 Bottled and Bond Act. It wasn't until 1958 that Bottled and Bond whiskeys could be older than eight years old. At that time, they were actually extended to 20 years old. The extension of Bottled and Bond was really the work of one man, Louis Rosensteel, who worked for the Shemley Distilling Company. Now, Rosensteel had seen the whiskey shortages in World War II, and as the Korean War was kicking off, he started to think, oh no, this is gonna happen again, and started mass producing at full capacity with his distillery. Well, it turns out the Korean War was nothing like World War II. And now Rosensteel had this huge influx of whiskey that he couldn't possibly sell. And he started to realize the Bottled and Bond Act is going to expire at eight years, and I'm gonna have to pay taxes on all this old whiskey that I can't sell. This is also coming around the same time that you start to see consumer tastes changing. Into the 60s, people were looking for lighter flavors and vodka was kind of really having its moment in America, at least the beginning of its moment. And at that point, we start to see major distillers make light whiskey, but they weren't looking for older whiskeys. They looked for younger, lighter spirits. So there was a real concern about what am I gonna do with all this eight-year-old whiskey that I know I can't sell? 
Well, Rosa Steele lobbied Congress and was able to get the Bottle and Bond Act extended to 20 years, which gave him plenty of time to be able to slowly trickle out this whiskey at older and older points. This is actually all part of the, the big whiskey glut that occurred in the 70s. That was still the time when a lot of this older whiskey wasn't as sought after and people wanted lighter spirits. So you could get some really wonderful old whiskeys that we would appreciate now, but that weren't in vogue at that point. Now, what is Bottled and Bond Whiskey? Bottled and Bond Whiskey is made from grain that was grown during one growing season, usually January to June or July to December. Then that grain is distilled at one distillery by one distiller. So it has to be the same guy at the same place taking that grain that was grown during one cycle and turning it into whiskey. Then that whiskey must be aged at a bonded, a federally bonded warehouse for four years at least. It can be bonded up to 20 years now. Finally, bottled and bond whiskey has to say on the bottle where the whiskey is produced and where it's bottled if it was bottled at a different place than where it was produced. And let's not forget, it's always gonna be bottled at 100 proof, 50% alcohol. The only way it's getting proofed down, by the way, from the barrel proof is with water. When you think back to the Bottled and Bond Act being signed into law in 1897 and all the history of alteration of whiskey, these rules really make sense. It's a really clear way to make sure you know exactly what you're getting and you can track every element of the process very specifically. You know exactly where the grain was from, you know when it was from, you know who handled it at every stage in the process from the growth of the grain until it was put in a bottle. That's a really helpful piece of information to have, especially when there's questions about where this whiskey is coming from and who's had their hands on it. I just find that information really fascinating. It doesn't really necessarily lend itself to the idea of Wild Turkey Master's Keep 17 year bottle and bond which is quite a mouthful. Uh, but I just think it's so cool to not understand where we're coming from with Bottled and Bond and really to understand why 17 year old Bottled and Bond is something that you haven't seen very much of. Now, I've had some problems with filming these videos, recording things, and then ending up having no audio. It's been very frustrating. So today I'm going to not drink all of this sample. Um, shout out to John Warner for providing the sample. I appreciate it, my brother. Um, but, I'm gonna leave myself a little just in case things go wrong. And if they don't go wrong, I'll have a little bit for later. Now, this is my first drink of the day. Uh, so I always like to preface my tasting notes with that. If I don't say that, then it's not my first drink of the day. I do film these videos in batches, so I'll shoot several different tastings. But I like to disclose that because my palate is very clean right now. There's nothing on it. so any sharpness or weirdness that's coming from this is going to be on a unaltered palate. So I've talked for way too long without tasting some whiskey, without nosing some whiskey. Let's go ahead and dig into the 17 year Bottled and Bond Wild Turkey Master's Key. <sighs> right off the bat, you get wonderful aromatics. It's a beautiful vanilla, some caramel in there. It's light caramel though. It's mostly this big, bright vanilla, some floral notes. I could maybe get a honey or maybe even a maple syrup. There's this sticky sweetness to this nose. I'm, I'm actually a little surprised how much corn I'm getting out of this. Usually something that's this old, the corn note kind of disappears, but I'm really getting a clear nose of sweet corn. Now, as it's starting to settle down in the glass and it's had some time to breathe, um, I'm starting to get some cocoa notes that I really like, both dark chocolate and white chocolate. Definitely getting this wonderful chocolatey element. You can tell it's a wild turkey product. There's something about the rye spice and wild turkey that's very uh, easy to spot, in my opinion. Um, I think if you give me some wild turkey blind, I'm probably gonna figure out it's wild turkey. Uh, my most recent blind video kinda sorta proved that. I figured out a Russell's Reserve was a wild turkey product, but uh, I wasn't very confident about the guess. Boy, and as this opened up, I'm getting all this wonderful dark fruit. I'm getting figs and plums. That's not something I usually get from bourbons. Yeah, figs, plums, cherries, lots of rich, dark fruits. And there's still this high note, this rye spice high note, and maybe a hint of citrus. There's so many layers to this whiskey, it's really beautiful. I'm definitely getting both cinnamon and oak on the nose as well. This It's this sort of soft charred oak and this raw cinnamon spice. It's not nearly as oaky as you would expect from something that's 17 years old. It's a lot sweeter aromatics. It's much more of a scotch uh, nose in terms of having dark fruit, hints of wood, floral notes. It reminds me a lot of a scotch in those regards, but it's so much sweeter than most scotches. 
Um, I don't usually associate scotch with that sweet corn quality. This is like a sweet corn scotch. Very interesting. Oh, now I'm getting this wonderful buttered caramel corn note. You know, the last several I've tasted, the palate and the nose have not really aligned. I'm really hoping this one does because the nose on this is beautiful. I love it. Let's see if it tastes as good as it smells. Uh, I should have moved this. Haven't really loved it on my first couple of tastes. I usually like to give three different tastes, though, before I really evaluate whiskey. First taste, it was just very plain. Um, it was smooth and balanced but it, I didn't have any exciting notes. The fruit notes are all gone. I smell them on the nose, I do not taste them. I taste the grain and I taste the wood and I taste some cinnamon. Second tasting, I'm starting to get a little more of the corn. So I'm optimistic that I'll start to open up and get some more of the sweet fruity notes that I really enjoy. Uh, we'll see, here we go. Third and final, not final, but third at least. Mm hmm Yeah, I took a bigger sip that time too. Yeah, the vanilla, it's sweet vanilla. Oh, it's very nutty. So I go sweet vanilla, then like this dusty corn note, and then this nuttiness, this um, like toasted almonds, and then the cinnamon and the woodiness, they linger on. It's got a very interesting um, dried oak finish. Very oaky on the finish. It's not astringent because it's a lower proof, I think, in part. Uh, but doing it at 100 proof, doing it at Bottled and Bond really gives you this sort of interesting, oaky, extended finish that isn't sharp. Um, but it's not delicate either. Oh, and then after tasting it, I go back to the nose and I get all this sweet aromatics. God, the nose on this I like, I like better than the taste. On the palate, there's, no, there's just not as much sweetness on the palate as there is on the nose. The nose is all this beautiful, wonderful, dark fruit, scotchy sweetness. Um, but the palate is a lot more like a 17-year-old bourbon. It's got a little bit of sweetness and very woody. The fruit notes just really aren't there. The wood is kind of taken over. There's some hidden little gems in there. If you start digging, you can find very subtle hints of like uh, maybe a plum, maybe a cherry, but they're super, super muted for me. I get a lot more um, this dustiness that's like a dusty corn almost. That's the sweetness at the very beginning, maybe with a hint of caramel. Then it goes into this wonderful cinnamon spice, maybe some nutmeg, definitely some black pepper, a little bit dancing on the tongue, uh, and it pairs really well with this almost floral quality on the palate, which is uncommon. I get floral on the nose a lot, but not usually on the palate. Definitely this herbal quality as well in the mid palate. And then the finish comes in, and it's very gentle, but it's clearly like oak and cedar. It's very woody. I get a little hint of like, you know, peanut shell maybe. Nah, I don't think so. There's some sort of like shelled nut that I'm getting on the palate, but it's pretty muted compared to the undeniable oaky, even maybe some like um, some cedar notes as well. But it's just very woody on the on the finish, and it lingers for a long time, uh, especially for something at 50% alcohol. This lingering woodiness is is really interesting. I, I'm kind of in a difficult position with this whiskey because this is really going to kind of be a divisive review. I think a lot of people love this and they seek it out. And after trying all those really interesting wild turkey pours back to back that I tried, uh, you know, I think this is probably lower on the scale for me than most of those. It's got so much sweetness on the nose, but the palate is just old bourbon. And I think, you know, some people really like the oldest, oldest bourbon you can get your hands on, but I don't really care for an oak bomb. I don't really care for something that's this dry. It's almost like a dry red wine in a way. I like red wines typically that have some of the fruity sweetness and then you get the dryness. And all the fruity sweetness has just melted away from this 17 year bottled and bond. Um, I'm getting a hint, a hint of sweetness in the front, but it's good whiskey, and I can tell it's good whiskey, but it's probably not my preference. If you really like woodier whiskeys, this is gonna be a great whiskey for you. Um, I think this whiskey would go really well with a cigar. If you like Maduro uh, cigars, that rich, sweet, uh, black wrapper, that's gonna pair really well with the woodiness of this and the hint of sweetness on the front of the palate. You're gonna pick up sweet notes in this, and you're gonna pick up some of the more earthy notes in the Maduro. Um, I think that's a great pairing. I don't smoke cigars anymore, but uh, I really enjoyed them when I did. Uh, and I think that, you know, this would pair really well with that. But this whiskey just on its own is not going to be something for somebody who just generally likes bourbon. If you're just a general bourbon enthusiast um, and you don't really like the woodier things and you just kind of want something easy and sweet, this probably isn't going to do it for you. You're going to love the nose and be meh about the palate. 
you know, wh what does that mean for the value? Well, it's expensive whiskey. I think the MSRP is $200. I've seen it as low as 150. I've seen it as high as 300. It, you know, I, it's hard to say. Value is such a subjective thing. I would not buy this whiskey at uh, that price point. Um, but if you like woody whiskeys, I think you absolutely should buy this at that price point. This whiskey is doing what it's trying to do very, very well. It's a very good presentation of that earthy, woody whiskey, showing you what 17 years in a bourbon barrel can look like at maybe, you know, best case scenario for it to still feel like a bourbon. This doesn't feel off profile. This doesn't feel like something unusual. This feels like a bourbon. I almost never say this, but I honestly feel like this whiskey would do really well um, either in a cocktail or finished. You know, if they had taken this whiskey and finished it in Oloroso Sherry, uh, or something like that, the sweetness would have come back. The fruit notes would have come back. It's missing that. Very tasty, just not necessarily my preference. Thanks again so much, John Warner. I appreciate the sample, my man. Hopefully that gave you enough information. I really think about these videos as informational um, to, to make you decide if you want to seek this out or not. I'm going to keep drinking this, though. I definitely think it's worth drinking. Uh, and you guys keep drinking like professionals. Cheers. Oh shit, there it is, at the very fucking end. At the very end, I finally get some sweet cherry out of this. Well, this Wild Turkey Master's Keep video is becoming really ridiculous, but I'm gonna pour myself a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna kill this sample probably in all, in all likelihood, but I just, at the very end of that last video, I was signing off and then I tasted that cherry that was missing. I tasted the sweet fruit finally. And I wanna see if that was just a fluke uh, or if there's a balance in this that I couldn't find in those first several tastes. Okay, so yeah, I'm figuring it out. So I'm definitely getting that sweetness. I'm getting this honey note and then this black cherry note and then it kind of all dissipates, but I'm gonna definitely finish this sample. I just have to, I gotta, I gotta do it for the people. Yeah, now that I've really sat with it for a long time, I'm starting to pick up that cherry note and maybe a hint of apple right away. First thing you taste is this hint of cherry, hint of apple, hint of honey. But there's so much wood, there's so much nuttiness, there's so much herbalness on the mid and palate and the finish that it, it, it overtakes it. So while now I can actually pick up the fruit notes, it's still not enough. It's still not balanced in the way I would like it to be. I think people who like a woodier whiskey will be very, very happy with this. It's, I mean, it's, it's balanced with like the base turned all the way up. Um, and, and that's fine if you like that kind of approach, but it's not for everybody, so. Well, I was gonna say I'll keep drinking this, but I damn near finished it, so I'll just finish it, I guess. And you guys keep drinking like professionals. Cheers.